the father as well, though. So you're presumably not seeing the family. It's just a big stress for everybody, isn't it? I've got two young grandchildren. Uh, Cameron's four. And uh, Penelope was, was 12 months when this all started. She's nearly 15 months now. And uh, she's started to walk. So it's, it's pretty stressful. It's not nice for, for her grandma, uh, my wife. It's, it, we just want to see her walk to us, you know? She's walking and growing up so fast. But there's every family in the country's got this situation. And uh, we have to just accept that. It's, it's, it's not, not pleasant. On a normal year, the highlight for you would be presumably each night going out on stage, but the highlight must be very different now every day. <laughs> yeah, the highlight is driving my wife to seven or eight miles to Sudbury <laughs> to go to the supermarket once a week. I sit outside in this glorious weather. Steve Harley, welcome back to Liverpool. It's been a while, isn't it? Yeah, it's been a while. Yes, it's been a while since I've played this wonderful hall. Can you do the maths? No, no, I would never clue. <laughs> we play a lot of shows. I, I ba basically on tour, like we are, you, you you struggle to remember where you were, and I mean this literally. Yesterday, mm. you really have to stop and think. Where have we come from? Someone said to me uh, uh, yesterday's sound check. One of the musicians said, uh, "That was a great night in Tunbridge Wells, wasn't it?" I said, well, when was that? We've been. Of course, yeah, and it all comes back, but you have to yeah. think it through. Yeah. yeah. In that case, can I take you back even further than Tunbridge Wells and ask, what is your first memory of music entering your life? Well, my mum was a singer. She was a very good swing jazz singer of the era, 40s. She was born in the late 20s. So in the mid-40s, she was a young woman singing in a swing band. She sang with Johnny Dankworth's orchestra mm. for a very brief period before Cleo Lane. She was that good. Mm -hmm. She sang a bit like, a, um, not Vera Lynn, the other one from that band era, it was English. Um, but she sang really, really, well, she sang around the house when we were kids, around the flat. Anne Shelton? Anne Shelton. Yeah. My mum was very much like that. Yeah. yeah, thank you, yeah. And so, the light programme, uh -huh. was on the radio, the, 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 the um, transistor, or the, in the 50s, the radio The wireless. The wireless. Yes. They had a radiogram, one yeah. of the big old things that <laughs> top lifted up, you know. A few, few LPs could be placed, or 78s. Workers' playtime. Yeah. Well, that was always on. Sundays was like Jack Jackson. Mm. Um, and she sang along to everything on the radio. We all knew there was singing in, 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 the, in her, mm. in the jeans. Mm. Um, so the music was always around us. Did you accompany her to uh, these shows? No, 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 she, before I was born. Okay, so this is... No, okay. she was a singer in the 40s. I yeah. wasn't born until the 50s. Okay. Um, she, I was the second child. She, like all women of that generation, of that era, they, they had a baby and stopped working. Hmm. She never worked again, my mother. Hmm. Not with, not she, she was 21 years old. No, I never saw her sing myself, other than weddings and things. She would give it a blast. Um, so the radio was on, and I heard things like, I loved pop music with words. I loved Buddy Holly in particular, when I was only eight or nine years old, late 50s. I was going to say, at age 10, you were given the guitar. No, I was 12. Were you 12? Okay. Yeah, I was actually, it was, I was 11 pushing 12. It was a couple of months before my 12th birthday that Christmas. Yeah. And uh, I'd been, I had been pushing for a guitar, but my dad was a milkman on a small wage, low wage, um, who did an afternoon job as a janitor in our, the blocks of flats we lived in, which were very civilised. It was a Victorian block of beautiful flat apartments. Steve Ahari, the frontman of the British rock band Cockney Rebel, who has died at the age of 73. His best known song was Make Me Smile, Come Up and See Me, which went to the number one on the charts of 1975. The musician had still who had still been touring until recently but cancelled the dates to have a treatment for cancer. His family said Harry had passed away peacefully at home, adding, We know he will be desperately missed by people all around the world. London born Harry lived on the Essex Suffolk Borough with his wife Dorothy, with whom he had two children, Carl and Greta. His family were by his side when he died. Whoever you know him, 
His heart extruded on liquor elements, passion, kindness, generosity, and much more in abundance. Dorothy Carl and Gritty wrote on the statement, The body song from his woodland that he loved so much was singing for him. His home has been filled with the sounds of the laughter of his four children. Tributes have been paid by Harry from across the music industry. Singer-songwriter Mike Bass, who worked with Harry on many songs, described him as a dear pal and a lovely guy. What a talent, what a character, he wrote on X, formerly Twitter. My condolences to Dorothy and all the family, R.I.P. made. The duo worked together on tracks including Bellarina Prima Donna, released in 1983, and the 1988 charity single, Whatever You Believe, in which they were joined by Yes, lead singer John Anderson. Ultra Fox frontman Miju Era, who produced Harry's 1982 track, I Can't Even Touch You, said he was a true working musician. He toured until he could tour no more, playing his songs for fans old and new. We were wrote on social media, Our songs live on longer than we ever can. Harry was born in South London in 1951 and formed Cockney Rebel in the early 1970s. The original band was made up by Harry Jean, Paul Crooker, drummer Stuart Elliott, bassist Paul Jeffries and guitarist Nick Jones. Their duet studio album, The Human Managery, was released in 1973. Other hits included Here Come the Sun, which was released in 1976. Harry also presented sounds of the 70s and on the BBC Radio, BBC Radio Tube between the 1999 and 2008.